can you say all other PPC experts suck, click here? And then drive them to your own site? Yeah. Yeah. They won't flag that? We should talk later about doing ads for this. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, it's actually quite budget friendly. And then over top of it, nobody actually pays for the ads unless somebody actually clicks for the ad. So at the very least, you had, you're paying for a user to come to your site. Yeah. So is it bad then when if you are placing a Google or a Google search ad on your own name? No. Like a okay. branding campaign? Yeah. Sorry. Just a question. No, because I mean, a lot of there's a, a lot of factors that kind of come into it, and I think branded campaigns have always been a little bit of a not so much a heated topic, but kind of to a certain degree, where some people believe that you should always have a branded campaign, and then there's some people who believe that you shouldn't. Um, I'm on the do it if you've got the money side of it. Um, because really at the end of the day, studies have suggested time and time again that when you remove a branded campaign, organic does not make up for the loss in conversions. Right. Um, because really at the end of the day, if you're not, one, if you're not organically showing up, obviously you need to have a branded campaign then, because then at least you get that exposure. But then the other half of it is if you've got a great uh, SEO ranking, it's a really good idea to have a branded campaign because then you take up the whole screen versus half the screen. And logically that makes the most sense. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know why people don't do it more often. Um, but I know that half, I think a, I think a study suggested that it's like 50% of advertisers actually solely do brand campaigns, which oh. makes sense to me. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I'm a big fan of just display ads because they make me want to buy things. Like I was on the sport check website and shoes were following me all around the internet. And I was like, can't buying those shoes. They're like vans or something stupid. Um, but I hate them when I go to a website because I'm like creeping on like someone that I think is annoying and then their campaign just follows me everywhere. That's annoying. So I guess there's not like a win-win there, but. Um, what is, like, can you talk about the advantages of display versus search, or what are the advantages of display in general? Um, there's a couple. So there's brand awareness. Um, they're really great for, like, driving, I guess, just, like, general awareness to your brand, if it's not something that's actually, like, commonly known, I guess. So if you've got, like, a new, a new product or a new service or just a new company in general. Uh, display campaigns are great for getting eyes on that business of yours. Um, you know, so that's one. Remarketing is probably my favorite one. Uh, so if somebody comes to your site and they don't convert and you're like, what the fuck? Why did you, why did you come to my site and not convert? You can actually like follow them everywhere, uh, which is essentially <laughs> your shoe story. Um, so I've always loved remarketing for that reason because it's just, I mean, it's fantastic. It brings people back. Um, and then also uh, high volume. So if you want a lot of people, the flu can lay out. <laughs> if you want to bring uh, a lot of people to your site and not pay a ton of money for it, display advertising is a great uh, place to start. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a, a great qualified um, qualified user to your site, but uh, you will get eyes on your site. Yeah, Brian says he loves when an ad is for things he's already bought, and then they still follow him after they buy. Is there a way to turn off ads if you if they converted already? Yeah. So there's like a. Uh, uh, in within like analytics, you're able to create factors on uh, when somebody's added to a marketing list or not. So often, what you'll see uh, by a lot of inexperienced marketers is a general remarketing campaign where they don't actually put in any conditions. Um, but what you could do is uh, like currently for a campaign that we're running, uh, we've got one where it's somebody lands on whatever page. And then they actually go all the way to the cart and then they don't do anything. So those are the people that get added into like the comeback to us type of remarketing campaign. Um, so it's just a matter of configuring the remarketing list to ensure that people who already bought don't get targeted again, which doesn't. Okay. Um, what kind of volume are we talking when we do display ads? Cause I, I heard that it's fairly cheap. 
I don't know. Can you confirm? It is actually fairly cheap. Uh, display ads, you're you're paying for you're paying essentially on a CPM um, model, so that's cost per thousand essentially. So it's a cost per uh, impressions. Uh, so what essentially ends up happening is that you're going to end up paying maybe fifteen cents per click, if anything. Uh, sometimes it's a bit higher, sometimes it's a bit lower. Um, but you generally, I don't know, I don't think I've seen anything that hit higher than, I want to say like 42 cents. Okay, that's not bad at all. It's cheap. It's cheap, but it's not a high converter, which is the, the right. issue that a lot of people have, right? Um, because it's just a display campaign. It's just tracking people and just showing people that you're alive. Um, <laughs> Here's a new one. I'm alive. I have a new infection. I was just going to say, I was like, like I'm struggling to do right now. Um, uh, but it's just, it's just like kind of keeping you at top of mind, but not necessarily um, keeping you in the line where people are ready to buy at that moment. So then how do we know if we should, if a business or our business should be doing search or display ads? Like, how do you figure that out? You, do there's a couple things that kind of work into play. Uh, so then there's like one thing that's uh, a big one is search volume within uh, search ads. Uh, so what are your potential customers searching for? Are they already actively looking for what you're lo selling? Um, uh, you can use like the keyword planner tool to figure that out. So in Google, you can just type in the keywords that you, you kind of want to appear for and I'll give you a range of whether the competition is high, medium or low, and I'll give you um, an idea of how many searches a month happen. Uh, and then from there, you can actually kind of make uh, a decision. So if they're sitting there saying that maybe there's about 10 searches a month for XYZ keyword, um, it might not be the best place for you to be just simply because like, I mean, you could do a campaign and be the only person that shows up that 10 times. Um, but is that a, the best place to put your advertising dollars? I probably wouldn't say so. I'd go the display route. Um, then there's also like the awareness side of things where um, you have to kind of decide whether or not, whether you, whether you think, people know who you are, right? So uh, do you think that there's a lot of awareness around your brand? Um, if you're looking to increase it, <laughs> I know you can hear my dog. <laughs> Look, they're cute. He's so annoying. <laughs> Making it very hard for me to concentrate. Um, yeah, so even if you have like a search campaign, it could benefit from a brand awareness campaign because then you can have... Uh, a brand awareness campaign through display and then have a branded campaign in search and that would kind of see that lift. So, uh, yeah, I think awareness would be a really great factor. So it, it just depends on where you think your brand is at, essentially. Does it matter what, like, if you're doing a service or product or, like, industry-wise or anything? They don't necessarily matter I think they matter in terms of um sorry <laughs> she has an ear infection everyone <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him like he's like literally crying in the background <laughs> oh okay because I'm listening to my daughter okay. it's so funny uh <laughs> um yeah, it depends on the product and service. Sometimes I'll, it you won't see um, the greatest return on your investment right away, um, and it just depends on what the product and what the service is. Uh, so if you're, um, I don't know, let's say an ERP software, because that's a client I'm working with, and I know that their buyer cycle is a bit, uh, a bit much, where they literally need, I think it was, 628 meetings to literally get like four closes like it's insane. yeah um and that's just the nature of the business because it's a it's a high 
um, value product, it takes time to install and learn. Uh, so you have to consider that into when you're creating a PPC plan because it's one of those things where you're like, okay, uh, you heard that, okay. <laughs> They're cute. <laughs> so annoying. Um, yeah, you have to consider those factors because you could start with like a, a search campaign and that's totally great and dandy, but how are you going to bring those people back, especially when the cycle is so long? Um, so that's when you, you're going to want to consider maybe uh, using a display ad, maybe not to advertise, but maybe to um, show people the benefit of your product um, or maybe bring them back with... Um, like a discount or something along those lines. If you've got like a an online retail store and you're selling jewelry or something along those lines. So for like services, like the other day, I needed someone to come and boost my battery for like urgent services. Is search better than display? Uh, yeah. In like that case, there's people looking for you immediately. Uh, so having like a call only campaign would be a really great place to start. Because okay. it's just easy for the person to sit there and see your ad, click the call button, and then now you've got a new customer. Versus um, you could do like a regular search campaign as well and then do like a call extension, which is fine. Uh, but it, I would think that it's less effective. So if it's something uh, that has uh, a sense of urgency to it, so like plumbing, your car battery, or like a mechanic, I would do a call-only campaign just to ensure that people are calling straight to you versus... Uh, then coming to your site and then getting lost. And so Neil Patel, my lover, always says stuff about mobile searches and like the percentage of mobile users who search things. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think there's like the last time I read the study, it was like 60% of searches actually happen on mobile devices now. Um, so people are sometimes specifically in the store or getting ready to leave. Uh, and they're making these searches before that actually happened. Um, so, sorry, he's really eerie. I don't know if you can still hear him, but he's very eerie. Okay. Oh, God. It's, so, it's, very, it's like really messing with my <laughs> Maybe he has an ear infection. Yeah, I had one a year ago, actually. It was really bad. Um, <laughs> uh, so, like, a, a user might look for a service on their mobile device, um, which essentially kind of means that they're not actually going to be scrolling through the website. Because, I mean, even if we're building sites to be mobile friendly and mobile first, uh, okay. most people still don't like the experience on websites through their mobile phones. Uh, yeah. So that means that they're generally um, looking for something within the ads just to go through and solve their problem. Uh, so we have to actually consider that as well when we're creating a PPC strategy that makes sense so like if i'm looking for like an office address usually i'll just put in like adwords girl address or, or like directions to and then if you had an ad that actually had your address in the text part that would be helpful is that a good example <laughs> no in that case you would do like a location extension okay and then people could just like get directions to you cool. um because at that point, if you're putting your address within the ad copy, then you're just kind of, um, it's kind of Being wasted space. It's just, it's wasted space, really. This is why I don't do PPC, because I don't fucking know anything. Um, <laughs> does anyone that's joined or online have any questions for me about Google Ads, PPC, Google AdWords, search ads, display ads, Bing ads? Search engine marketing, Sam. Search engine marketing, search engine optimization. Are you going to ask questions about Leia? Oh, uh, how old is she? She's four. Isn't she the cutest? Yeah, okay. She's cute. Um, we still do have a little bit of time, but I'll talk about next week. Next week, we're going to be talking about how to optimize your videos for social media, and that will be on my channel. So if you're not following me, it's at Hello Beverly with an L-E-Y. And 
we're going to go over like all the cool things to like remind you when you're editing a video, remember that you're putting it on social media. So things to look for. Um, if you want to watch a replay of our past episodes, you can go on our YouTube channel, the links in both of our bios and it's like edited down versions where we don't rant and banter enough. So like these are the fun, like this is the fun version. And then if you want like just the meaty details, go on our YouTube channel. Um, we have other things like um, common PPC mistakes, uh, agency, how to fu- why you should fire your agency. How to social find a social find- media manager. Yes. How to find a social media manager and like all our past episodes are there without us bullshitting. And we meet here every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And Amit has an ear infection. So hopefully by next week when we talk about video, um, your ear infection will be gone. Or else we can maybe make a video of your ear infection and optimize it for social media. That's a great idea. I'm sure everybody will want to see that. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Quality, Quality content. We still have, like, five minutes. Um, do you have anything else you want to add about search versus display? I Is think it doesn't to... matter. I don't think we answered the question of who wins, really. I think it's, like, even. It's basically even. Or it depends. It just, it, it just depends, right? It's, like, literally, it just depends. It depends on what your goals are. It depends on where in the buyer's journey your client is um and often one plot or not one platform one um one channel won't do the trick you're gonna need multiple channels um so always consider having a search and display strategy is there a way for some for a user to opt out of uh the remarketing display ads so you don't see it following you everywhere Part of GDPR is that you can take users' information out now. Um, I don't know so much on the Canadian front. Legally, we don't have to, I think. I think it's just for GDPR, which is exclusive to the to Europe, essentially. Um, yeah, I'm fine I with that. I mean, because... You're going to see other ads there instead. But, like, I like that everything's relevant to what I've been looking at. And maybe that's... I personally like the ads. I find them funny when I see them because I'm like, oh, just on that website. I'm on XYZ type of remarking list. Like, I like to try to figure that out. But then at the same time, it's what I do for a living. So that might be it. Yeah. So I do understand that they can get relatively annoying. But I don't know. I don't care. Really quickly, can you talk about, like, I when I search for things, sometimes I see really weird ads on search. Like, if I'm looking up a PPC, like, for PPC or something, an agency will come up, and it's actually, like, the text will be, like, something about the best faux, like, the, the soup faux show. And I'm like, what is, like, that was an actual ad that I saw for, um, I think, White Spark. Like, is that just for attention? Is that a is that a mistake? Like, I just and then I see like funny non related ads pop up, but it's like that company does what I'm looking for. Hmm. Or like, should we use spelling errors? Because I know on social, it's like if you put in spelling errors, people are more inclined to pay attention and be like, oh, there's a spelling error, and they'll engage with it. I, it, it depends, because kind of, there's so many things that go on. So there's something called, like, keyword, dynamic keyword insertion. So you could put in, like, um, you could say, like, chocolate or something. And then if somebody puts in dark chocolate, then the ad would show mm-hmm. um, versus just chocolate. So it could be something along those lines where it was just a spelling mistake. It could be something that they were just literally just trying out and seeing if it would work because I feel like White Spark if it was White Spark they likely didn't know the task if anything if I know anything about that company 
<laughs> but they likely did it as a test. It wasn't something that they literally thought was going to work. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes if it's just uh, an ad that is irrelevant, but it's exactly what you're looking for, it just shows poor judgment on their part. Because really, at the end of the day, now their quality score has just tanked. Like, the logic, I don't understand the logic of people using, like, stupid ads to bring people in and then sacrificing their quality score because now they're paying a ton more money just to have you step through that door. So I think it was Kaylee a little while ago who sent me an ad, and it was literally, oh, God, what was it? It was like, we we suck or something like that. Like something really, it was just. I remember you heard that. Yeah, I saw it on your feed. It was fucking ridiculous, and I just like sat there and I looked at it. I'm like, how? What? Where? What made you think that this was a good idea? Can you put up like mean ads? Like if someone's searching for PPC experts or whatever, can you say all other PPC experts suck? Click here, and then drive them to your own site. Yeah. Yeah. They won't flag that. We should talk later about doing ads for them. <laughs> Just kidding. I like all they the shame. It. It's only when it might be a trademark infringement. Where, okay. So something, and it has to be like a bigger brand for them to catch it. Otherwise, if it's not, then the brand themselves have to catch you infringing on their trademark. And then basically, you, it, you just uh, file like a complaint, and that's essentially it. Yeah, well, because I'm rude, like the person who commented, and she will sing 20, whatever it was. Um, but we are out of time. So, again, you can watch replays of this on YouTube. Links in our bio. Next week, we'll be talking about optimizing video for social media consumption because you don't want to watch a logo at the beginning of a video for 10 minutes or else you'll just bounce from that. So, yeah, and we'll be back Wednesday at... 10.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you have any questions, slide into Meet's DM. Slide in there. And if you have questions or you want something covered about videos on social or social media in general, you can slide into mine. And there is a long-ass question. Oh. Do you want to take that since we're here? Uh, give me a second here. Let me find it. Oh, I have a client who is wanting to launch her... Organic makeup line, what would you recommend is the best campaign to use? Google Ads and Instagram, It's they're thinking about using. Instagram, for sure. YouTube, for sure. Beauty guru shit. I would do 20% search, 30% display, 50% Facebook and Instagram. YouTube. And YouTube. I say YouTube because I'm a huge fan of YouTube right now. And I watch all, like, those James Charles and Jeffree Star beauty makeup guru people. But I don't know what the conversion rate would be like. I don't think the conversions are going to be very good on YouTube. Oh. I would do oh. search just because if people are looking for more organic makeup, then you at least show up. Display yeah. on brand awareness side and volume, and then at least you can create a remarking list off of that. Uh, and then Facebook and Instagram, because it's eerily creepy. You can literally target anybody. Dare my favorite. So I would put a bulk of my money into Facebook and Instagram, especially for a product like that, where it's, I've always said that there's three easy, um, three, what's it, three easy verticals on social to create, like, a really great following, and that's mommy and baby shit. Fitness and health and makeup. This is true. Like, I quite literally believe if I started any of those three type of Instagram accounts, I'm famous. And now Beverly is gone. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I would do. But anyway, so Beverly is here, but not here. So I'm just going to go. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to message Beverly and I. Uh, if not, we'll see you next week when we're talking about video for social media consumption. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.